I was tending to my collection. Does it count as a collection if it's stuff you can't get rid of? Most of the collection didn't need actual tending to. They just sat in whatever best contained them. A box made of lead, some carefully drawn runes, sometimes just a strong enough padlock on a desk drawer. But some of them needed particular offerings. First, I wrote down my daily thoughts into a brown wolfskin journal. As soon as I close the page, the words will disappear. If I didn't offer these words, the journal would become unhappy and begin to take words from my mind by force. Next, I took a worm that I gathered from my garden out of a jar and placed it into a pair of old dentures. It'll eat it when I'm not looking, which is fine, as I would prefer not to see that. I used to feed the thing some chicken every single day before I realized it would take any kind of meat. Worms are a lot cheaper. It continued like that until I finished the last one, singing into a gramophone so it won't make an inaudible sound that will drive me slowly insane, and checked out my map. It was one of the friendlier pieces I owned. It made my job a lot easier. It was focused on the next city over, a red X marked over an address on Roderick Street. I suppose that's where I was headed today. But one more chore before I headed out. I looked in a small jar in my den. Inside the jar was a carefully mixed elixir and a red poker chip. The elixir was tinged blue. I dumped the liquid down the sink and fished out the chip. If you bet in a card game with this chip, it would force all your opponents to go all in. Not terribly dangerous, but as far as I'm concerned, any magic relating to mind control needs to be dealt with. The chip was a flimsy plastic, hollow too. I could easily have snapped it in one hand. But that is an incredibly dangerous way to deal with a magic item. The backlash could kill me. There was another way to handle it, though, which is why I soaked it in that elixir overnight. The chip had turned the elixir blue overnight, which told me that it was safe to dispose of this way. I put the chip in my mouth and bit down. The weak plastic cracked, and I kept chewing. The human body is very hostile to most forms of magic, and eating an enchanted item is a good way to destroy it, provided that it's safe to do so. I continued chewing until I didn't feel any hard shards left in the plastic, and swallowed. I made my way to the front door and whistled. A black and white border collie followed me. I'm sure you're expecting me to explain how dogs can sniff out magic or ward off evil, but no. Bear is just a very smart and loyal animal, and friend. He's been coming with me to these jobs for years. I let him in the back of my van and climbed into the front. I never know what to expect on these jobs. I never know what to expect on these jobs, especially since I got the map to just point me where to go without any info. Sometimes a second-hand bookstore gets a tomb that's more than a good read. Those are the easiest jobs, and I can just buy the item for a few bucks. Sometimes someone inherits some jewelry that curses their bloodline. It's usually a bit harder to convince people to part with those. In the more challenging jobs, a normal item that someone's owned for years suddenly unlocks latent magic. It's a challenge to find which item is causing the issues. I'm in the city in a couple hours, plus a pea break for Bear. Roderick Street was out in the suburbs, and I pulled up to the house in question. I don't have a sixth sense or anything, but I felt something off about the house. There was a large yard, but no garden. No decorations on the walls or visible through the windows. The driveway led to the back door, so that's where I knocked first. I waited, knocked a second time, and waited again. And then I tried the doorknob, finding it unlocked. We let ourselves in, Bear staying close to my side, and slowly moved around the house. There was sparse furniture, pretty much the bare necessities, and absolutely no clutter. I called out, Hello? A dry voice replied back. Hey. A little confused, I followed the voice and found an older woman in a dining room. She was facing away from me and sat on the floor, staring directly at a humongous, full-length mirror that was leaning against the wall. I should have known better, but I was already looking into the mirror before I realized what it was. I was shown chemical formulas, different equations and elements, being shown next to the Volskin journal I had back at home. I pieced together that this was the elixir I needed to destroy that journal. I kept watching as the images became more detailed, instructions for rituals and containment for magical items. I kept staring until I was disrupted by my hand being licked by a very sloppy tongue. <laughs> I looked down and the trance was broken. Bear was licking at my hand, wearing the dog equivalent of a concerned expression. 
I noticed a couple of things. There was a Nintendo Switch on the ground next to the mirror. It was the only piece of clutter I've seen in the house. And my feet were sore. It felt like I'd been standing for hours, which a glance at my phone confirmed that I had been. The woman also wasn't next to me anymore. I thought back to what I saw in the mirror, formulas, and ways to destroy some of my more persistent pieces. That's all I remembered though, that the formulas existed. The actual elements or numbers or steps were gone. Something in the back of my mind told me I would remember more if I kept watching the mirror. I dismissed these thoughts immediately, knowing it was just part of the trance. I left the room, deciding to look for the old woman. She was in the kitchen preparing dinner. She didn't seem surprised to see me there, and before I could ask questions, she said, It lets me go to eat and sleep. Doesn't it have so many amazing things to show you? She looked exhausted, but spoke with a smile, as if she loved the grip that the mirror had taken on her life. The mirror isn't offering you anything, I told her. You can't remember details, can you? It just wants you to spend your life staring at it. She looked thoughtful for a moment and responded, I don't think I'm allowed to think about that. Her wistful expression lasted only a moment before she smiled again and turned her attention back to her dinner. I decided I needed to deal with the mirror before I could help her. I found the stairs and made my way up to the second floor, looking for her bedroom. I took a blanket off her bed, noting that there was a layer of dust covering the room. No one has slept here in a long time. I carried the blanket to the dining room, holding it open in front of me, carefully covering any line of sight. I moved to where the mirror was and tried to cover it fully with the blanket. I hit the wall. I felt around and still just found wall. I lowered the blanket to find that the mirror had disappeared. And in its place wasn't a wall, but, but a wooden door. I hesitated, but the only way to figure this out was investigation. I put down the blanket and turned the doorknob, bravely pulling the door open. Inside was a garden, but I gasped. It was much more than a garden. It was an alchemist's laboratory. There were plants I've never seen before, but recognized from books and studies. Some of the rarest and most magically potent flowers and herbs that exist. I wanted to go in to collect as much as I could. They would have been invaluable to my research and to destroying some of my nastier items. At first, I was proud of my willpower when I closed the door. But once I did, I was plunged into darkness. The daylight from the windows replaced by a night sky. I looked around the room. The old woman was laying on the ground asleep. Bear was curled up on the couch. There was a bowl with some dog food beside the couch, which I guess the woman put there for him. I was exhausted and sat down on the couch. I could feel myself slipping into sleep. I, I jerked awake. I've done all-nighters before and work was more important than sleep. I stood back up and moved to the woman, still laying on the ground. I knelt down and stirred her awake. When did this start? I asked her. What changed in your life to make the mirror appear? She looked at me, a little dazed. I started playing video games. I wanted to play them with my granddaughter. I found a switch at the flea market. I got a game there, too. She sat up. I set them up at home. When I put the game in... When I put the game in... I'm not sure what happened. I... I have no idea how long ago that was. The game. I looked back to where there was once a mirror and once a door, and saw a television. The switch was on the floor, plugged right in. I couldn't tell you what was on the screen. I'm still proud of myself for not looking. I reached for it without hesitation and got the game cartridge out. The effect was immediate. The house around me shifted to a completely different environment. The clean floors were covered with layers of grime and dirt. The empty rooms became full of dishes, paper, and trash. That woman, barely conscious, became withered. She was thinner, her hair longer and tangled, her clothes ratty. She looked like she hadn't moved in months. I looked down to the game in my hands. A small, thin square with a title printed on one side. Wish granted. I slipped it into my pocket. 
I don't have many pieces of enchanted technology, so this will take some research. The woman was laying on the ground, but still breathing. As I left the house, I made the mental note to contact the police and send a wellness check her way. I know this sounds heartless on my part, but my priority was containing the cartridge. It was obviously extremely dangerous. It was a quiet drive home. I couldn't place why. It felt colder. I felt lonely. I kept patting my pocket, making sure it was still there. I was forgetting something. Time seemed to be moving slower. About halfway home, I stopped for food. First time I've eaten in almost a day. I felt myself growing anxious while sitting in a booth in some forgettable truck stop. My mind insisted that there was something waiting for me, that I was wasting time. I ate as fast as I could to get back to my car, and of course, nothing was there waiting for me. <laughs> what would be waiting for me? I checked my pocket again. I kept driving, and I thought about what happened and what was happening. The game was enchanted. It wanted people to watch it and could change forms to attract people. It could make a TV, a mirror, even a full room. And it made people forget. You forget details of what you've seen when you look away. How did I look away? I checked my pocket again. She got the game and the console at the same place. What if they're both enchanted? What if the Switch wanted the game back? I took something from it. It took something from me. I stopped the car hard. I turned around and started back to the woman's house. I needed to get my dog back. I was definitely speeding, although time seemed to be a little broken then. It felt like I was in the car for hours, but at the same time it felt like I had turned around minutes ago. I pulled up into the driveway feeling like I was storming a castle. I was angry and scared, but not of the items. I was scared for my dog. The adrenaline made me feel more powerful than anything the console could throw at me. I wasn't thinking straight, but I didn't care. I barged through the back door and pushed clutter out of my way as I moved directly to the room with the switch. I was greeted with a small, framed photograph. It was on the floor, surrounded by garbage that flooded the house. And it was a picture of Bear, sitting patiently in the clean, empty house. The switch was on the floor beside it. I reached into my pocket and took out the game. Somehow sure it could understand me, I yelled out, Is this what you want? In response, the switch's cartridge slot opened. I took a step forward and then saw something that made me hesitate. At my feet, the woman still slept. Hour after hour of staring at the images must be both physically and mentally exhausting. Who knows how much this thing has taken from her? I didn't know what to do. I put the game in my mouth and chomped down hard. Oh, gh. I forgot about the bittering agent. Oh, it tasted so bad. In a crack between my teeth, ugh, that made it worse. It was spreading in my mouth. The house shifted once again. The trash and clutter was replaced with a normal, manageable mess. A few dishes, some laundry, some dust. The woman changed to look more, well, normal. Tired hair and average clothes. This is what the house really looks like. The disaster zone was just another illusion. As I chewed, the switch started to crack and splinter. I managed a painful swallow, and the switch exploded into pieces. As the switch tore apart, a blinding flash of light emitted from it, quickly dying away to reveal its freed hostage. Bear had his tail between his legs and came to my side, where I nearly picked him up in a hug. Looking down at the woman by my feet, I awkwardly made my way out. She is definitely a heavy sleeper. Back in my car with my loyal friend beside me, we headed home. I needed to make sure to do some research on what I'd just swallowed. And also, get some mouthwash. <laughs>